Musty. Uh, he wants to know, aside from Ayn Rand, who is your favorite libertarian philosopher slash economist and why? Well, first, Ayn Rand's not a libertarian, so, <laughs> you know, and you can ask me about that. But, um, you know, my favorite would be, I think, Ludwig von Mises. Uh, I mean, Mises, I think, is the greatest economist who ever lived. I think that he was the most consistently free market, the most um, uncompromising of all the economists. And yet, he, he also was not an anarchist, which, which I think is, is, is a good thing that he wasn't an anarchist. Uh, and, I th and, and he really, he moved the profession forward. He, he had real um, profound ideas that really, I think, uh, will, will change the world ultimately in the field of economics. So I would say von Mises. All right. Uh, um, Jordan, as a free marketeer, do you believe, I'm sorry, do you not believe free markets are inherent to anarchy? No, I think anarchy and free markets, uh, uh, put it this way, I think free markets under anarchy are impossible. Um, markets develop in the absence of coercion, in the absence of force. Uh, they develop w where there is a known system of law, where the enforcement of that law is consistent, even if it's even if the law is not pro-free markets, that is, even if the law is not consistently pro-freedom, markets will develop when the law is known and is, again, practiced and enforced consistently. And there's some level of freedom, obviously, left. Under anarchy, you have competing law systems. You have competing enforcement agencies. Uh, you don't know in any given transaction who you're transacting with what legal system they're under, how that will work, how you will resolve disputes. It creates massive amounts of uncertainty, and, and I think the marketplace breaks down. I also think that ultimately anarchy devolves into, or has to devolve into, I call it gang warfare. Uh, it, it Basically what anarchy does is it legitimizes the idea that force is, uh, is something we can trade. It's force is something we can, um, uh, you know, it's not an unmitigated evil. It's something we can negotiate around. And uh, you have a variety of different agencies, force agencies over a particular geographic area. The one that has the biggest guns or the most influence or the most power is going to engage in a hostile takeover of the rest of them. And a hostile takeover of security agencies doesn't involve buying the stock of the shareholders. It involves hostility. It involves uh, uh, using, using a gun to, to take them over. So what you get very quickly under anarchy, I, I believe, is authoritarianism. You get the strongest, biggest security agency taking out everybody else, and, and it's a pretty bloody disaster in the process. So not a great environment for free markets uh, to develop and contracts to be, be uh, respected and, uh, you know, uh, freedom to thrive. Barn Al asks, how can egoism be formulated into a system of rights? Well, I think it's the only way to formulate a system of rights. I don't think there is any other uh, system of any other way to formulate a system of rights. And indeed, the weakness of what's called natural rights theory is that it basically collapsed in less than a hundred years, and and today there is no there is no conception of rights in our legal system because uh, the idea of individual rights has been emptied of all content. So today. People think they have a right to health care and a right to my uh, money and a right to my labor and a right to, uh, to food and a right to a job, and a, you know, which, is, which is the exact negation of the whole concept of rights. So how does it connect to egoism? Egoism is an idea that your life is the standard, that, that your life, that morally, the pursuit of your own happiness, the pursuit of, of your own flourishing, that your own life is your moral purpose in life. Now, uh, what objectivism argues is that the, the way in which to pursue your happiness, the way in which to pursue your life and to survive as a human being, 
is to use your reason. It's to use your mind. Uh, it's uh, to, to figure out what the rational values that are necessary for your survival are, and then to go out there and act on those values. Now, for that to, uh, to be able to happen in a social context, in a context where you live with other people, the, you have to be protected from the one enemy of reason. And the, the enemy of reason is force. The enemy of reason is coercion. The enemy of reason is somebody with a gun, somebody with authority to tell you what to think and what to do, what you can do, what you can't do, what you can't say, what you can't say. Um, somebody who can use force against you to dictate your values and to dictate your actions. That is the enemy of an egoist. That is the enemy of a moral human being trying to pursue the values necessary for his own happiness. And in order to, in order to, in a sense, institutionalize this idea of freedom, uh, we have the concept of individual rights. Individual rights is a moral concept. It's not a political concept. It's an ethical concept. It's a concept that recognizes that individual, individuals morally must pursue their own values, their own chosen values, using their mind, a free of force, free of coercion to attain their own happiness. And individual right says, yes, the state, the government's only job is to create an environment in which you can do that, which means create an environment in which force is unacceptable, in which we extract, eliminate force from society so that you can go and be an egoist, so that you can go and pursue the values you believe are necessary for your own flourishing, for your own life, for your own happiness. So I think the two are, are, are necess necessarily connected, and you cannot have a proper conception of rights without a conception of egoism. I am to begin with. I wonder if I can ask you to capsulize. I know this is difficult. Can I ask you to capsulize your philosophy? What uh, is Randism? Uh, first of all, I do not call it Randism, and I don't like that name. All I right. call it objectivism. All right. Meaning a philosophy based on objective reality. Now let me explain it as briefly as I can. First, my philosophy is based on the concept that reality exists as an objective absolute. That man's mind, reason, is his means of perceiving it. And that man needs a rational morality. I am primarily the creator of a new code of morality which has so far been believed impossible, namely, a morality not based on faith. On or faith. Not on faith, not on arbitrary whim, not on emotion, not on arbitrary edict, mystical or social, but on reason, a morality which can be proved by means of logic, which can be demonstrated to be true and necessary. All right, all right. Now, may I define what my morality is? All right. Because this is merely an introduction. My morality is based on man's life as a standard of value. And since man's mind is his basic means of survival, I hold that if man wants to live on earth and to live as a human being, he has to hold reason as an absolute, by which I mean that he has to hold reason as his only guide to action and that he must live by the independent judgment of his own mind, that his highest moral purpose is the achievement of his own happiness, and that he must not force other people, nor accept their right to force him, that each man must live as an end in himself and follow his own rational self-interest. All right, before we go on, remind us, Please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. 
But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.